Hello everyone, welcome to Really Dicey. Uh, today we're going to check out Warhammer Fantasy Roleplaying Starter Set. It is the fourth edition of the game. I've uh, been intrigued to pick this up since I've seen it in, at Gen Con uh, this past, well, in 2019. Um, it, it, the marketer just did a great job explaining to me about the game and I was intrigued by it. I was never into Warhammer growing up. It just seemed like a very expensive hobby, at least the miniatures, uh, hobby to get into. Uh, I knew there was a role-playing game, but I just, at the time, just, I was so invested in so many other different systems. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very intrigued to see what's inside this box. Okay, Fantasy War. And look at that. All right. Look at that. There's a, looks like a... That's the GM back. screen. Yeah, look That's at that. the simple GM screen they're talking about. Very nice. Looks like it comes with dice. It's a nice pair of dice, two ten-siders. Hmm, very intricate, very pretty. Maybe a little hard to read. Really? Not too bad. Let's see. Okay. Let's take a look at it. All right. Um, let's carefully... Everything's really tight in this box. You might have to dump it out. Yeah. All right. Read this first. All right, so... Okay, what do we got? Oh, okay. That's a what's in the box. What is Warhammer? Definitely a starter's kit. Okay. Back. There's looks like some story. So I'm gonna take everything out of the box. See this. Oh. Okay. Well, there's a map at the bottom of the box. Yes. Wow. Okay. That's nice. Using every inch of space. All right. There's some um... tokens. They look like they might be coins. They mentioned those in the first book. Okay. To read this first pamphlet. So we'll see what those are. All right. There's, I'm not sure what this is. Oh, these are characters. That's characters. Right. Pre-generated characters. Excellent. Okay. Oh, and a nice picture. Large picture of them. That's nice. All right. looks like those. I believe when I spoke... The gentleman, you mentioned that, that I think this with this six of these. Wow! Oh, that's great. You can set that in front of you, like a screen, when you're playing. Oh, that's so cool. On this side, you have all your information, and on this side, there's a picture of you. Ha ha! As you go adventuring. Oh, well, that's interesting. That's nice. All right. So, Amaris Amberfell. Okay. Interesting. High Elf Merchant. All right. Ferd Ferdinand Gruber. <laughs> okay. All right. We have the Human Wizard. Oh, of course we do. My goodness. That is very interesting. Okay. He's going to stand out in the crowd. <laughs> I'm just a simple farmer. <laughs> See, I have a scythe. All right. That's uh, Mo oh, wow. Morella Brand uh, Brandesnap. Brandy Snap. Brandy Snap. Is that the Mor Hobbit? Then? Morella Brandy Snap. Let me see. Right. Who is that? It's the halfling. Yep, I was right. It's the halfling thief. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Interesting. We have Gunnar Rolf Rolfson. Gunnar Rolfson. Okay. Ah, the ah, dwarf, yeah, dwarf. Obviously. Oh. Yep. Okay. Yeah, this is actually really neat. Those are, those are nice character sheets. Yeah, I don't think I've seen character sheets this nice. In They're set other. up character screens. Even. Yeah. I like that. All right, so this is... Uh, ah, there's another map. Oh, two maps. Okay, a city map and a region map. Very nice. Okay. All right, let me flip it for our viewers. Right. Okay, that looks okay. like uh, another map, another region, and another city. Okay, great. So we've got two cities and two regions. Okay. Uh, introduction to the Empire. <laughs> A <coughs> little bit of setting history and information. And conditions reference sheet. That's great. Okay, good. Nothing wastes more time than finding out what does, like, uh, knocking out someone. <laughs> How to do that. <laughs> what does poison... How's okay. poison work? Test Okay, more um, rules reference sheets. Okay, that's very cool. useful to cool. running the game. All right, an injury reference sheet. 
Got a combat reference sheet, okay. Turns out there's going to be combat in this grim, perilous region, who would have known. Alright, here's All the right. adventure book. Oh, wow, okay. that's pretty substantial looking. Yeah, let me, I'll just do a quick flip. Very nicely designed. Yeah, looks like a good amount of information, easy to read. It's like a guide to the land of Ubers. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uber Shrek? Uber Shrek. Uber Shrek. Okay. Okay, yep. I need to. Looks like I may need to catch up on my German a little bit better. Okay. Yep, that okay. definitely looks grim and perilous. All right. All right. Looks like more handouts. This is a uh, rumors you have heard. Okay, so that mean looks to be like props, uh, like specific to some of the adventures, maybe. Okay, it's one sided. Same thing with this. Another set of rumors. Um, I don't know if players are supposed to look at this. Well, I would imagine so. Rumors. True. Right. I've always liked rumors. Those have a long history going back to oh, yeah. TSR. Uh, going shopping. Oh, this is a, okay. Oh, okay. So this is a very quick uh, sheet just to find out what you can buy. So going through. Characters love shopping. Pages. All right. And a bit of advertisement. Okay. All right. Very cool. Very All nice. Right. All right. So let's take a break and kind of really explore what's going on here. Okay. Uber Shrek. First of all, I want to say that they do a great job presentation. The art's fantastic. Agreed. Uh, they do a great job with maps. They do a great job in, in layout and in design. Um, the art is very evocative. It really captures the setting yeah. and feel of the game. Now, uh, looking at it, uh, I would say that after looking through the, the adventure book, now there's no book here like some of the other boxes where they'll be like, okay, this is the, the rule book. Uh, the adventure book is the closest thing you'll have to the rule book. It's it's pretty much it's what's great about this kind of like like it's it's you, you learn how to play as you're playing the adventure you you you'll start role playing right away and then once you get to certain points in the game that's where you start learning certain things like combat how to use your skills right. how to do initiative and things like that you said it was like a video game it just kind of drops you in the middle of it. yeah like so you, I, I'm sure um, we play I, I play certain games where like uh, they just drop you in and you kind of have to learn the controls as you're playing it it's sort of like that a lot. Okay. Um, you know, um, it's. I will have to say that uh, that if you play D and D, if you play Pathfinder or any of the other uh, editions variation, the uh, the rule system is very different. You know, you use percentiles for for everything. Um, you don't need any other dice; just percentiles, two D tens, and um, as long as you roll under your skills, you roll under for your your weapon skills and so forth. Uh, you. Um, for the most part, you've made your roll. So, like Call of Cthulhu, we are rolling under. Yes. Percentiles. Okay. You know, so uh, I I think this is not something I could just open up easily, open up the box, say, okay, let's play this right now. This is something, especially since I'm not familiar with Warhammer, um, I'll need some time to really read this and get to know the rule system. Uh, honestly, I might just play this by myself, just so I can know the rules. Sure. Uh, I get to know the adventure well. Um, uh, what what did you gather from looking at the the background information of this world? Well, uh, trying to piece together the setting information here, um, it mostly f uh, figures on the city of Ubersreich, if I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> the setting seems to be a fantastic version of uh, late uh, or, or I'm sorry, early Renaissance Europe. Uh, Franks in uh, proto-Germany when it was uh, the Holy Roman Empire. There were different competing duchies. Um, so what we have is um, the fantasy races. We have elves and dwarves um, and lots of undead and necromancy um, and competing uh, duchies vying for control. So there's all sorts of small wars. Uh, this city of uh, Uversreich 
uh, sits on a trade route. So it's a large city with a very a cosmopolitan uh, city with all sorts of different races where everybody can come together. A big adventuring city. Um, the book uh, gives you um, lots of, like I said, evocative pictures so you can see what's going on. Uh, magic seems to be uh, illegal unless you're working for the state. Mm. Okay. Uh, so one of our characters was a witch hunter, okay. of course, looking for heretics. Uh, one of our characters was a wizard, but he seems to be working uh, officially. Okay. So um, it's a it's a slightly different setting than if you played D and D. Uh, D and D is very um, faux medieval. This is really kind of faux Renaissance. Okay. So we have uh, rapiers and pistols, and cannons. Um, uh, yes, and a dark cult, and the, you know we have a um, evil cultists. Okay. Yeah. I, I I am intrigued to play this. I I like role playing settings where everything's everything's very brutal, like like the the environment, the government, uh, people. Um, I I don't like easy. Oh, I don't well, like easy games. I this like to start certainly isn't hard. easy. There yeah. are uh, the gladiatorial pits. There's famine. There's disease. Uh, yeah, this is a dirty world, yeah. <laughs> a grim world, as they keep saying. Yeah. So, so I'm I'm intrigued. I would yes. say overall, um, I will willing to give this a chance. I I who knows? Maybe I'll switch around now that uh, I'm looking for a different game system to try out. Maybe this would be something I'd be because I just love the the design. I love how the layout is. It just seems. They put so much thought into they did. this box set. I will say that the information is kind of scattered about. Yes. Um, so you do really have to read everything and piece it together yourself. I, I might have liked it a little, um, a little easier to digest, a little easier, you know, a little clearer. This is exactly the political situation. This is how magic works. This is how religion works. Instead of having to glean all that information from you think, the writing, you need to keep it vague so that you could kind of put in your own, like homebrew it a little bit, like putting your own information in it. Or do you feel that it's just <laughs> the, the the way they lay out the information? Could I think be... it was more of a style thing. I I don't think um, they've left any gaps purposely for you to fill in. It seems like it's a very detailed world. Um, it's just that uh, much like the rules. The setting just drops you in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it begins pretty much where like you're, you're in the city, and then a riot happens, and you're involved in it, and you're pretty much at fault, in a way, <laughs> uh, for it. Um, at least that's what the, the guards say. And so uh, so you're already in this like this this confused setting, which I, I like in the beginning, to confuse, confuse players in the beginning. Like, you should never give them a... In my opinion, uh, a steady footing in the game. And <laughs> you should always like, kind of like, just give them a little chaos so they could just before they could, um, uh, so they can um, enjoy a little bit of terror. <laughs> if that makes sense. I agree. Uh, as a player, uh, I would love that. As a GM, it would take me a while to digest this whole thing. Yeah. I would need to read it maybe several times before I could piece together the whole setting. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend, again, a, a game master just opening this up and just playing right there and dead. You really need some time to read these books first. You know, look look at everything. Get used to the rule system also because uh, it's a, they abbreviate a lot, so it's possible that you forget what WS stands for, uh, what SL stands for. I have to actually go back a few times like, what SL again? And just kind of... Because, again, they use a very different terminology than other role-playing systems use. Um, so if you're interested in this game for your group, buy a copy of this starter kit, give it to your GM, send them off for a weekend, and then let them come back. Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> yes, let us know what you think in the comments below. Did, have you played this? Uh, what are books from uh, this 4th edition series that we should check out? Please let us know. Uh, one more thing, Manny. If, uh, if you are going to rate this game on a scale of, I don't know, 3 to 18... <laughs> um, what rating would you give this? I would say, well, from what I see, I say sixteen. Yeah, I say pretty high. Just yeah. because, again, presentation to me is very important. And this is, I mean, I mean, uh, a character sheet that works like a screen that gives you all the information that you need right here. That is I, nice. That, that's right. That's, I mean, I, I, I've seen very few boxes that actually take advantage of, of art like this box it has. And uh, I love all the material here that's used. So I concur. Uh, let's give that this game has a charisma score of 16. There you go. Excellent. <laughs> All right.
Let us know what you think in the comments below. Have a great day.